Dude, Jimmy VC gets the game winner and the insurance marker? What's worse than that? My nose is still broken, but I've come down with a cold and several times today I've had to blow my nose and sneeze. See, this is why. This is why. Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What the not nice! There's a giant head! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these. I like to have fun. With you wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Leafs! Lose? What? What? I was told they didn't do that anymore! Leafs lose 3 1 to the. Who was it? Who was it? Leafs lose 3-1 to the New York Rangers in a, in a thing that I didn't even know could happen anymore. But one of those goals was an empty netter. So really the Leafs lost a 2-1 game 3-1. Oh, but that empty netter was by Jimmy VC, so that makes it like 4-1. And he got the game winner, so that makes it like 7-1. The Leafs lost, it doesn't matter. And they lost in regulation. And Mitch Marner's streak comes to an end. And could this thing get any worse? All right, let's tear it all down! And watching the views go like this, go like a whole lot. Cause I make a video after every Leafs game, win or lose, and I am happiest when they win, and apparently not everyone is. Leafs lose to the Ducks, 180,000 views. Leafs beat the brakes off the Ducks, 50. You better all be there when I make a video about the Leafs winning the cup. Stop laughing! Before I continue yelling, think you know which way it's gonna go? Make your bet at Sports Interaction. For example, you could have bet on the former friends bet by betting that Jimmy VC would score against his former team, which is the Leafs, and it's also the Rangers, and also the Rangers. He's bounced around a lot, the Rangers can't get rid of him, and why would they want to after tonight? Anyway, when the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered. Pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. So, how do we talk about this game? A question I asked myself many times before turning the camera on. Because sometimes you're a very good team. The Leafs are a very good team. Sometimes you're on an unbelievable heater. Which the Leafs are. They're on an unbelievable heater. And sometimes when you're a really good team on an unbelievable heater, you lose. You just lose. That's all. You don't have to have played badly or gotten embarrassed. You just lose. What's the age old question? Can't the Leafs ever just lose? I think the question after tonight is, I guess not, because even though this is a perfectly acceptable, forgivable loss in an 82 game season, did it have to be Jimmy VC twice? Did it have to be Jimmy VC twice? This dude went six straight games without a goal. His last goal came against Ottawa, which barely counts. And his last goal before that was November 10th. He had three goals coming into tonight. Son of a gun. And he got two. We can talk about the individual goals and moments of this game, but there is something that it, it rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. From Sportsnet's Luke Fox, Sheldon Keefe gets asked about former Leaf Jimmy VC coming up big against them. Are we done? Keith asked, and the scrum is over. Okay, listen, we are well beyond the days of firing Sheldon Keith. Remember that? Remember when people were talking about that? I was really mad at the team, and even I wasn't suggesting that. Now here he is with one of the best teams in the league. The, the dude is probably not getting enough Jack Adams consideration. Dude, the decor is like a bunch of inflatable Santas and reindeer and Mark Giordano. Listen, he's been a wonderful coach for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he's especially been a wonderful coach for the Toronto Maple Leafs this year. However, I don't like that when asked about Jimmy VC, Sheldon Keefe walked away. I don't like that. And I'll tell you why. And it's not about Sheldon Keefe specifically. It's about the Leafs organization. Listen, Nazem Kadri got his pound of flesh, right? He scored with the Calgary Flames on Saturday. But even better than that, he won a Stanley Cup with Colorado and he said, anyone who called me a playoff liability can kiss my ass. And it's like, didn't you get kicked out of a playoff series and basically cost the Colorado Avalanche a chance at another Stanley Cup? But no one remembers that and no one cares because that's all hypothetical and whatever. And shut up and just enjoy the win. He won, he won. And as the winner, he gets to, he gets to do that a little bit. Have some fun with it, enjoy. He should have shown the ring when he scored on Saturday, he won. But when it comes to Jimmy VC, out of any of the former Leafs, that have been pitched out of the organization and played against them, Jimmy VC deserves to rub the Leafs' nose in it more than anyone else. Because you all know the famous quote from the Amazon documentary, and if you don't, I'll let you in. Jimmy VC, listen, he was given every opportunity to succeed with the Toronto Maple Leafs, 
and he didn't. He started the season on a line with John Tavares and William Nylander. He started in a position that the Leafs are currently still trying to fill, second line left winger. He scores in his first game, and then he's not really able to do anything after that for long stretches of time. And then he gets put on waivers, and the Canucks claim him, and that's it! But during the documentary, the famous quote is Keefe comes up to him in practice and he says that VC's game is kind of vanilla. Well, I don't think Sheldon Keefe's the bad guy there. That's a coach trying to communicate something to a player and he's trying to get him to do something. And that's all Jimmy VC really had to do in Toronto. Rangers fans, you can tell me what he's doing in New York besides beating the Leafs. But all he needed to do in Toronto was figure out what he was. Are you the go and get the puck guy? Are you like a sniper guy? Are you net front presence guy? Are you like excellent defensive forward guy? Are you role player guy? What are you? Jimmy VC's greatest export as a Toronto Maple Leaf was an abundance of nothing. Like Sheldon Keefe saying that his game was vanilla was not wrong at all. What I thought did kind of stink a little bit and I'm gonna talk out of both sides of my mouth here. Don't worry, I'll catch myself. Is that the Leafs allowed that quote to be in the Amazon documentary. And like the follow-up thing where Brendan Shanahan's in the room where they find out VC's claimed off waivers by the Canucks and like he's not even really upset. But the vanilla quote staying in the documentary in itself was really loud and memorable because of the unbelievable amount of alleged stuff that was cut out of the documentary. And hey, it's the Leafs' prerogative to allow those cameras in their room, and then when the documentary makes its way to the editing suite, they got a say in what went in and didn't go in and whatever. But because there was nothing at stake with VC, nah, that guy's gone, he's gone. That documentary didn't come out until long after, months after, VC got claimed off waivers and wasn't part of the organization anymore. What are they saving his feelings for? He's not even a Leaf anymore. So the quote stays in, and it's kind of this embarrassing thing. And in a 1-1 game in Madison Square Garden in front of a home crowd of a team that welcomed him back with open arms, he sticks it to the Leafs. Oh yeah! That had to feel amazing for Jimmy VC. What a story! What, a, what an easy thing to cheer for! Had it not happened against my team. I really, that part I did not enjoy. I'm not saying the Leafs deserve to have that moment of having their noses rubbed in it, but I am saying that VC deserved that moment to relish in it. Now the talking out of both sides of my mouth thing, I am not saying the Leafs should have cut that from the documentary. I am saying the Leafs should have left all the dirty laundry, all of it, left it all in there because I'm greedy. It just, it would have been better. It would have been way better. Although I suppose screaming at your top line that they're getting dominated and then saying it even louder in an intermission between the third period and overtime of a game and a series that you lost is pretty bad too. I don't, I don't need to watch that documentary again. Not because it was a bad documentary, but rather it's bad for my mental health. All right, look, the Leafs play the Rangers. It's a tight game and it's a game that comes down to moments. It was a playoff type game. Relatively low event, right? This isn't the Tampa series. This is kind of how the Rangers like to win games, or at least how Gerard Gallant would prefer for them to win games with one of the best goalies in the world. The Rangers tried to play fast, they tried to play heavy, tried to hit the Leafs, tried to force the Leafs to make quick decisions with the puck, which is their whole strength is moving the puck from the back end. But despite that, the Leafs hung around, they did a really good job, and it came down to just a couple things. Number one, the Leafs give up a power play to the New York Rangers. You're gonna do that. Mark Giordano's the one who took the penalty. You're gonna do that. If I had one criticism of Mark Giordano as a Leaf, he takes way too many calls. He does. At very least, he takes too many calls for a guy who is needed this badly right now with everyone out. Rangers have a good passing play on the power play to Philip Heedle and a couple things. Number one, Philip Heedle does not get this shot off right away. Like, Murray had time, but he's not set at all to push off and get over. And the other thing is, even if he was, Justin Hall would have been in his way, so I'm, I'm not sure what anyone is supposed to have done here other than Hall maybe getting into the butterfly position. At the end of the day, Murray only allowed two goals in this game, and you're not going to be able to stop every puck, but this was a stoppable puck, if that makes sense. It wasn't a complete top corner pick and 
bit like right off the bar laser beam from Philip Heedle. This was kind of right in the middle of the net. Uh, high, high, but it was dead center. Murray gets the right push off. Maybe he doesn't get to it. Maybe he doesn't get to it, but I thought he would have had a chance. He's one of the biggest goalies in the league. Kali, before the end of the first, the Leafs even it up, doing the right things, going to the net, just throwing it on, all that dirty stuff, and Michael Bunting gets a rebound. 10 game point streak. Keep it going, Mike, you're our only hope now. And it's a tie game, and you know who got an assist? Do you know who got an assist? Con Norris Timmons! Dude, Connor Timmons has five points in seven games of the season. You know what's amazing? Two of those seven games were with the Coyotes. That dude's got five points in five games as a Leaf. He had seven career points in 41 career NHL games before he became a Leaf. He's played five games with the Leafs and he needs two more points to match that total. And maybe more impressively than the assist is he got a shot on goal. See why is a shot on goal impressive? Because the dude somehow has five points as a Leaf, five assists and two shots on goal. Tonight he got his second. How? Very interesting game of musical chairs on the Toronto Maple Leafs right now. Timothy Lilligren left this game. He, he had his hand wrapped walking out of the arena. We don't know how he's going to be. I'm not going to know uh, until tomorrow, so I can't say it in this video. But it looks like Morgan Riley's going to come back somewhat soon, and Jordy Ben might come back somewhat soon. So at some point, someone's going to have to go on waivers when all these guys get back. And there's been some thought that Connor Timmons might be one of those guys. But if guys keep getting hurt, i.e. Lilligren, then you don't have to do it as urgently. And hey, I got an idea. When everyone's healthy, no you don't! You don't have to put them on waivers. This dude's been too good to put on waivers. They have him running the second power play unit right now. They've had him running the second power play unit since he got here. This is a team that has TJ Brody, Mark Giordano, Timothy Lagren. He, he didn't deserve that at all? He wouldn't have been good at it? Are you sure? Five points in five games. I just don't pretend to ever know anything. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at the television and gone, are you sure? Only for Sheldon Keefe and Kyle Dubas to simultaneously shout, yes we are. Yes we are! Listen, I don't know how the Leafs are going to be able to keep Connor Timmons, maybe if everyone just keeps getting hurt, but let's, let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope that everyone comes back and gets healthy, and it'd be nice to keep him if that happened too, right? Right! Well, they're obviously up to something. They placed Axel Rindell, a right-handed defenseman who's in the minor leagues for them, in the ECHL to be specific, on unconditional waivers for the purpose of terminating the contract. Basically, so he can move on with his career. He can do whatever he wants after this. He can go back to Finland. He can sign an AHL deal. He can sign with another NHL team. He can do whatever he wants. And if you want my full reaction to that, the video is not on this channel. It's on my TikTok. Steve Dangle, all one world, word, Word, all one word, go check it out on TikTok, all one word. All that to say, you're up to something, Kyle. You're up to something, what are you up to, Kyle? Kyle's up to something, guys. Kyle's up to something! All I'm saying is there are lots of options out there, and the last one should be losing a player who's a point-per-game defenseman. And he's gonna stay that way forever, right, Producer Drew, whose team drafted him in the second round? Yes. Absolutely. And we can wrap up talking about the game. We don't need to talk about the empty netter. We all know who it was scored by! But so was this goal, the eventual game winner from Jimmy Vesey. Again, it's a game of inches. The Rangers have like a one and a half on one. Not quite a two on one, but it's a one and a half. John Tavares is, is the guy making it one and a half instead of two. TJ Brody has Jimmy Vesey, but he's also thinking, okay, I'm guarding a two on one here. This is a problem. So he presses L1 and R1 and he gets down and he does that swooshy thing that TJ Brody does so often and does so well. I'm not gonna rag on him for doing that because his success percentage rate is, is ridiculous. There are two things though. One, when it doesn't work, you look pretty silly and here's photo evidence of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough one when you're just sorta, just Maggie Simpson sprawled out like that in the snow. It's not good. And the other thing is Tavares gets there. He gets there. And you gotta make a decision at some point and Brody made a decision, and unfortunately it was the wrong one. Tavares got there. If Brody just took away VC, I don't think he would have been able to get an adequate pass through. Certainly not a pass that would have ended up in the back of the net. No, the Leafs did not have their best night. They only had 23 shots on goal. The Rangers only had 20. I did think the Leafs had some pretty good chances, though, and Igor Shesterkin was equal to the task. Leafs don't get another goal. Marner doesn't get another point. 
Them's the breaks. Questions. What brand of vanilla ice cream was Jimmy VC tonight? You know when vanilla ice cream wants to be fancy, they call it vanilla bean? Like that's not where vanilla comes from or whatever. I don't actually know where it comes from, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's the vanilla flower because I play Red Dead Redemption. I don't know if that's true. Does it grow on a tree, like a long tree? And, and you're like, is that a Lady of the Night orchid that I need for that mission for Algernon Wasp? And it's not. It's a vanilla flower again. And you're like, I'm running out of room in my satchel. Anyway, here's my question. When did vanilla become an insult? That's enough. I've never had vanilla ice cream and been like, mm, ugh, yuck. It's good. There's a reason they sell so much vanilla ice cream. It's really good. What if they sold like raw sewage ice cream? That'd be strange if we all bought that. We don't, we buy vanilla ice cream because it's wonderful. Who should be the Leafs 2LW going into the playoffs? Uh, their second line left winger. Everyone seems to be penciling in Matthew Nyes here. And listen, he may very well end up being the answer. Uh, he's unreal right now. He was great last year. He looks even better this year in university. Problem is, this is a team that's hoping to contend for the cup. And is it the greatest strategy to go to like a teenager slash 20 year old slash student and be like, all right, you're, you're responsible for this now. Yeah, I know we got Austin Matthews and William Nylander and Mitch Marner and John Tavares, but you're responsible for this now. You're in charge. If we don't win, it's your fault. I think it'd be awesome to add Matthew Nyes to the team, but also get a guy like Timo Meyer is the name I keep bringing up. And one I saw on Twitter a bunch of times today, and this would be amazing for vibes, JVR. Mm, you know it probably, it's not the best, but you know, oh, it'd, it'd feel great. Last but not least, here's Tic Tac Tomar from during the game. I say this as a sign of my confidence in the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I will eat all the crow if this goes south. Jimmy VC ain't scoring. Way to go, stupid! It's all your fault! It's all your fault! It's all your fault! Love you, Omar. Anyway, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell your friends. Be careful what you say about vanilla.